À 55 ans, il a déjà joué dans le Duke Ellington Orchestra, Thad Jones' Mel Lewis Big Band, Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers et a été le dernier saxophoniste de Miles Davis. Nous avons rencontré Kenny Garrett. Mr. Garrett, hi. How are you doing today? Very nice, thank mm -hmm. you. How are you doing? I'm actually pretty good. Yeah, not too tired? Not too tired. Play every day, almost? Um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. We get a chance to travel the world, to meet beautiful people, play beautiful music, and hopefully touch some people. Um, we had a concert last night, and we were playing, and it was a small little place, but it was very intimate, and I think people could feel the music, you know, Sometimes, you know, with the intimacy, you can feel the music. It's a little closer, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let me show you this. Mm. I have, I bought this in the 90s. Mm. <laughs> 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 And I call it my Kenny Garrett. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just for you to realize that yeah. you're a sax hero. You're such a hero for mm. so many people. And uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who did this, you know. I was well, in my 20s. That's a good one, but see, the, the one that I had was from Japan, and it had this little ball on it. So it was different, but definitely people were, were You want to check that out because it says New York? I yeah, think. but I didn't, I didn't get mine in New York. I bought mine in Japan. Ah, <laughs> okay, that's the secret. Yes, it was in Japan. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you, you know, yeah. what I'm, I guess yeah. what I wanted to say is yeah. that you, uh, for us, you know, admirers, mm. uh, you're such a complete artist because of the music, because mm. of your aura, uh, the look too, Thank it's, it's such a mm. pleasure to have you. And uh, I am surprised because you went, I think, out of the high school at mm. 18, mm -hmm. 17, That's correct. I don't know, but uh, you went straight to Duke Ellington Orchestra. That's correct. Then probably Thad Jones, Mel Lewis. Art Blakey? Well, actually, I was playing, when I got to New York, that's when I started working with Thad Jones and Mel Lewis and hmm. Danny Richmond, and I mean, there's a whole list of people. Uh, but that was the start of it, really, just playing the Duke Ellington band after high school. Mm -hmm. the, the story is, um, there was a second alto player, and he disappeared somehow. Mm -hmm. I guess he decided to go home, which was good for me. <laughs> and uh, they were looking for uh, someone to sub. And my teacher, Bill Wiggins, and another teacher, Marcus Belgrave, they're the pillar of the community in, in Detroit, they recommended me because I was playing in all the bands. I was the up-and-coming saxophonist. And I ended up just supposed to go out for the summer and then ended, ended up playing with the Ellington Band for three and a half years. So... You didn't go to college. You didn't go to uh, University of Music, I guess. Well, I, I did go to college, but not the college that most people know. I went to the, the College of Duke Ellington, hmm. where we played the music of Duke Ellington. I played with Cootie Williams. I sat under Harold Minerve, mm -hmm. who was a protege of Johnny Hodges, and Noah Turney, who were protégés. So that was a first-hand experience. So it was a college or university. I went to the University of Miles Davis. I went to the University of Freddie Hubbard and Woody Shaw, so, and played the music of Charles Mingus. So for me, it was a firsthand experience. So it was a university. It just wasn't from the same perspective that everybody is you know, coming from now. What do you think of, of those colleges? Because I think you have a link uh, with Berkeley College of Music. You got a, a degree, honorary degree? Honorary de doctor's degree, yeah. That's beautiful. I heard it was packed. It was packed. It was actually pretty interesting, but I think you know about universities. It's it's um, people always ask me, "What do I think about that?" I said, "Well, if you're from a small town and there's no no musicians or you're not, you need to be in an environment where you can be inspired." I think for me, I was just fortunate because I got a chance to go with the guys who actually played. Mm -hmm. You need to play that music, so. You can't get any better education than that, you know. I mean, I can go to a school and I can play Duke Ellington's music, but not to play it with the music. I play the musicians who play with Duke Ellington. It's just totally different. And they're a little stricter, uh, but they, there was the lead alto player, Harold Minerd, actually took me on his wings, and he taught me about playing the saxophone. He used to talk about something called a bell tone. 
I'm not sure if you know what a bell tone is. I was uh, playing with him, and he said, um, you have to play a bell tone. I'm like, what is that? And um, one day I was listening to Sonny Stitt, and I heard this sound. I said, that's the bell sound. It's when you, when the, you pop the bell, and it rings. But I never knew what it was at that time. So they were sharing a lot of this information that you, you couldn't really get. You know? And that's, what, that's really what I do with my musicians now. It's kind of the same thing. I share the information from all the musicians who I play with. You know? So it's, uh, it's learning on the bandstand, opposed to learning in a university or a lab, as I call it. I hear uh, when you play, I hear uh, Johnny Hodges, Benny Carter, hmm. uh, Jackie McLean, I hear Miles, hmm. Cannonball Coltrane, Macy o. Parker. Hmm. Uh, would I be close to the truth or uh, well, am I forgetting someone? No, you, well, I mean, there are a lot, a lot of people. There's Hank Crawford, um, there's Sonny Stitt. But, you know, I think the thing for me, I came through all those musicians, but I always, in the back of my mind, because I remember my sister, there was a Gary Bark solo on um, a tune with Phyllis Hyman. It might have been Benjamin Dhaniwa. And uh, she said, well, can you play that solo? And I said, I can play it, but I want to play my own solo. So I tried. I played a little bit of his solo, and then I played my own solo. And there was another solo with uh, Angela Bofield, who was an R&B singer from New York. And Eddie Daniels played a, a, a solo on that, a tenor solo on that. And my sister wanted me to play that solo. But I never wanted to play anybody else's solo. I wanted to play my own solo. And I think at a young age, I don't know where that came from, but that was kind of there for me. You know? But there were so many people, I mean, like I said, who influenced me. There were a lot of tenor players. I mean, you name Coltrane. There was Sonny Rollins. There was uh, Johnny Griffin. I mean, Stanley Turrentine. I mean, it's, it's just a list, you know, because my father played tenor, so Macy O. Parker. I discovered recently mm -hmm. you are from Detroit mm -hmm. and uh, Mackenzie High School. You, you Mackenzie you High School, that's you, correct. You went there. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I saw on one of your last albums mm -hmm. uh, the tune Detroit, very nice. Mm -hmm. There's a vinyl, vinyl sound, okay. the scratch sound at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then I saw a lot of um, references. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, musicians, actually, okay. a lot of uh, Hi, uh, Haynes here. Is it for Roy Haynes? Yeah, that's from Seeds from the Underground, but that was for Ray, Roy Haynes. That was actually right after I performed with um, the Five Piece Band and then the Freedom Band. Uh, both of those bands were with Chick. So that experience offered a lot of um, different approaches to music. Um, Chick and John McLaughlin, they were writing a lot of odd meter. And I started to hear a lot of odd meter, so I started to, to write it in, in my, my songs. And also, in the Freedom Band, I was playing Roy Haynes, and um, I always wanted the drummer to have a shout chords behind him, you know, like this kind of lifting up the drum. So I wrote this tune, Haynes, here, which we play, and then it, you know, on the record we played it one way, Live, we can open it up and you know get to a different vibe, you know. And being from Detroit, mm -hmm. and uh, of course we think of the Motown, mm -hmm. the label Motown, uh, discovering Diana Ross, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder. Did that influence you somehow? Would you hang out with those musicians playing on those uh, records? Well, I didn't hang out with the musicians. I was a little too young for that. But I did meet uh, James Jameson Jr. Uh, my first year into McKenzie High School, but he was leaving the next semester. Um, but I think it definitely influenced me because that's what I heard at home. I heard the Motown song from my mom. Uh, my father was playing Stanley Turrentine, uh, Joe Henderson. Those were his men. So I would listen to all the CDs, David Fathead Newman, those kind of people. So I heard all his music. I just heard everything. And then also in Detroit, there was the there was like the avant-garde period. There was groups around. It was every, every kind of music you can really want to play was there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what was good for me. But I think another thing is that these musicians saw something in me and they took me under their wings and allowed me to play and to grow and to teach me. I heard something else mm -hmm. very different mm -hmm. is that you like 
these. <laughs> this is for you, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, watch out. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> do you know, do you know <laughs> thank you. this? Oh. <laughs> Different kind. You know, I don't know that one. What, what's nice in Belgium is that <laughs> you have the Dutch writing, okay. then the French, and very often English too, so okay. everybody understands fruit mix, do you know? Okay, merci beaucoup. You're, you're very welcome. I'm going to have to go see my dentist when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you. I want to thank you for oh, your thank time. You. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I got you. <laughs> you got me. <laughs>